Good morning. Happy Monday. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning, everyone. So glad you're here. It is Monday morning. It is International Women's Day, and we are so thrilled to have this fabulous panel of women from our community here to celebrate with us this morning. So I'm Karen Kulika at KC, and we got Karen Kessler, KK. And uh, we are celebrating with four of our very wonderful women from our community who are just really great people who are leading in all kinds of cool ways in their own lives, in their businesses, in their, uh, in their careers, and in their families. And we are really jazzed to have all four of you here and welcome. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things I loved when I looked at the United Nations when they were putting out their piece around International Women's Day is that they really were focused on leadership, which is our cool piece. And so when we invited you ladies today, it was with that, how could we find out of this amazing community we have the most broadest panel we possibly could so that every single person out there that's checking out Triad right now can see themselves, can understand that leadership is a very broad topic. As Ladana, you were saying this morning, <laughs> it's so broad. It is absolutely. And we want it to stay that way. We want people to understand what's going on with leadership with them isn't only positional that positional is one way to do it. And how do we represent the other ways as well? So we have really found this beautiful across the board piece. And as we bring us all together, I wanna ask each of you for one or two words sort of word association, what does leadership mean to you? And Heather, why don't you start? Uh, shared vision, let's. Nice, Ladon? Guidance. Mm, Sanal? Forming a community. That's leadership for me. Good. Leanne? Belonging. Ah, oh, see, I love it. We totally picked all the right people. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like for each of you to introduce yourselves and give us an idea from your eyes, what areas of your life is leadership most prominent for you? Um, Heather, why don't you start? Hmm. What areas in my life is leadership most prominent? Well, you know, the first thing that popped into my mind is my family. Um, as, as, as my family has grown, I have four children, they're all adult children now. Um, I realize that, that that's been my training for leadership because if somebody's not running that ship, <laughs> it just, and you know, I used to be apologetic about it. I used to think of myself as bossy, controlling, whatever. And, and then it was a coach that I was working with, uh, she was working with me, um, you know, made it clear to me that this is necessary. This is what has to happen. <laughs> Otherwise things don't come, somebody's got to be bossy. They just do. <laughs> so I, that's where it started. And then of course, in, in a classroom, you must have this, this, um, this culture of leadership, whether that's you as the leader or passing the leadership on to, you know, children for certain periods of time or, or colleagues or, or whatever. And then, uh, you know, in the coaching role, it's, it's really morphed, um, uh, completely not requiring a bossy sort of demeanor at all, uh, most of the time. Uh, and it's, <laughs> yeah, most of the time. Uh, but but it's, the, it's the idea of leadership that you're leading someone into their own wisdom. Like that, and that doesn't require bossiness. That just requires, as, as Leanne says, a guide. You know, this is where we're going. Follow me. Oh, you don't want to follow me there. All right. Well, let's try over here. You know? <laughs> so that leadership concept has really changed for me from the first time I encountered it with this, you know, family sort of uh, context. Oh, I love how your perspective on it changed. Completely. It's so it different. Is. And, you know, what I really see in, in my in my coaching that leadership concept has really <laughs> Is that anything that um, anything that you would want to tell a client? You're like, oh, I wish I could just sit here and tell you my wisdom here. It, if you wait not very long, out it comes from them. So yeah. that's been that's been a huge change. A huge a change doesn't even capture the word. It's eureka. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. We're going to get more into that. Ladonna, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And and I know you have years of leadership experience as well. 
Um, well, I, I try not to think about how long it's been, you know, that's <laughs> dating myself. But so, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm a brand marketing and communications professional. And most of my, um, my career has been spent in corporate roles, really. Um, but the way that I, I actually think that I've become a better leader over the years simply because of the time I take to try and understand myself. So self-leadership is huge for me because I realized that once I started getting to know a little bit more about who Ladena is, what makes her tick, why are you upset? Why are you angry? What, why are you nervous? Understanding all of those vulnerabilities and emotions, um, I actually got better at helping people. And I use the word guidance when I talked about, you know, um, because I think, um, I, I always put myself in someone else's shoes because uh, when you're floundering and you don't know what to do and you're, you know, exposed, you need people to gently guide you along, right? And so, um, so leadership really for me, for, first and foremost, is mastery of self. And then once I've got that under control, I find that I'm a much better uh, leader of others. Oh, nicely said, absolutely. See, this is a thing that I love, right? Heather and LaDonna agree with each other, but have a very different perspective, have the initially look at leadership. And that's one of the things that makes this panel so important this morning. Sanal, how about you? Thank you, Karen. And I'm so glad to be here. Happy International Women's Day to everyone. And just as Heather and Jana said, they put it so beautifully what leadership is about. So for myself, I can say it has been a huge transformation. I teach art. Uh, just a quick introduction about myself. I'm a visual artist and an art instructor. And my way about uh, of teaching art is not just the techniques, but the power of color, the, can, the color energy, which really goes into making any kind of art. So I started as teaching art, the, teaching the techniques, but now it has grown to be more of a gui gui guidance in the community. Like I'm not really teaching the techniques, but I'm just gently guiding my students to bring out the art within themselves. It's not like me, me teaching them something, but I learn so much from my students also. So I think leadership is always, you have to keep yourself open to learning also. That is, I think, what makes a true leader to just be able to grow as a person, grow as a teacher. So that for me is true leadership. Thank well, you. Nicely said, I love it. Uh, yeah. I. I just want to dive into each of you even further, and I promised myself I wouldn't. I will. We will get there. Leanne, you're next. Good morning. So uh, I'm a holistic practitioner and coach up here on Manitoulin. Um, and for me, leadership is about being a reflector. So basically, um, it's the old adage of leading by example. So with my clients and with my community, friends and peers, it's all about showing up as my most authentic self. And it's about being in flow and just allowing other people to see what's possible mm -hmm. and what you can bring to the community and what you can bring to the world. And just showing that by being, by being you, by being your truth, by being who you are. And that's how we ripple out and cause change. Yeah, absolutely. Nicely said. Leanne, tell me, how has um, the personal growth that you've done changed you, the amount of influence that you can have on others? How has your influence changed as your own personal work has evolved? Uh, well, it's grown, I'll tell you that. Um, by being who we truly are, people are just naturally drawn to that. So, um, you know, I'm seeing more clients now. I'm seeing the people that were already in my world changing. You know, we are the five people we spend the most time with. So it's just, it's just been really fascinating to me, especially with my family, how um, I've grown. I've seen that ancestral healing happening. And it's just been, it's just been magical since I've started this journey with you guys. So thank you very much. <laughs> I wasn't fishing for the compliment, but I'll take it. You are most welcome. <laughs> I do really love having you. <laughs> awesome. And I think, Leanne, I think your mic is popping off your, your necklace a little bit when you Sorry. Oh, no apologies required. I just thought you would appreciate knowing about it. <laughs> my ear, my earbuds kept disconnecting, so I had to go old school. <laughs> it's awesome. We will, we are here for each other. So Sonal, tell me a little bit about how your own, again, the whole, your own personal leadership has changed, but tell me how it's changed um, 
your ability to celebrate with your clients when they do take those leaps forward? How has is, how is your own personal leadership changed that? I think I've seen uh, like, uh, like I always think when you have something of value to offer your clients or customers just find you somehow. Like I'm so <laughs> amazed by this virtual environment, how this has grown. Like, uh, like now I'm having clients or students from the States and Canada joining my workshops. And each, each class is a celebration. It's a very, very good word you use, Ken. It's really a celebration of their creativity. And just seeing like, even they are not in the same room as uh, me, I can see the, the shift in the energy, even if they are on Zoom or they have their, uh, they might not have their videos on, but I can feel the shift in the energy when they talk about what they are doing with their pains, with the creativity. So I think that is the most beautiful compliment anyone can give me when I see the shift and just the energy being so much lighter. Like first, maybe they were a little uncertain about the processes or what they what value they were going to get from my my teaching or leadership. But then I can see a shift and then it's just a celebration, like, like just, just the way I wanted it to be. Just bring out your inner child and play with colors and everything will just shift. <laughs> so I think that has changed when the, with this virtual uh, environment also. And that, that is why, like, like I said, doing this course with you and your guidance, it is really helping me to give value to my offerings and, and, and a good platform for that also. Oh, I'm so glad you're experiencing yeah. that success with your clients. Mm -hmm. We're the same way when they start taking yeah. their own piece. Oh, and yes. I did it. And we're like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing that. <laughs> awesome. Now, LaDonna, you quite often, you have spent a, a lot of years leading people in other continents. Like they're not there with you. And I know from my time in government, I've watched other managers and leaders have a really tough time suddenly needing to um, manage remotely. And mm. over the last mm. year, a lot of people have had to do what you were doing long before it was, you know, absolutely yeah. paramount. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about, you know, as you're, you were talking before about your own personal growth and how much that helped. In my experience, personal growth leads to personal trust. How did you help the people who weren't there with you that are remote and on another continent build trust in themselves? You know, what's really interesting um, is that um, leaders, it takes time, right? Everybody wants things to happen very, very quickly, mm -hmm. especially in re remote environments. We all want to just get on with the work. Let's do the things that we've always done. We're just now moving to video. We're just, you know, audio, whatever. Let's just get on with it. But, but that doesn't work. That What I've found is you still have to find ways to take the time to know every individual you are working with. I mean, if you've got a massive team, that's a whole different ballgame. You have to figure out your way around that. But I mean, what I have found, so whether it's building relationships with folks in China or Australia, or I would find the time, even if it was just once for the quarter or whatnot, I am going to have a personal conversation with that person. I'm going to ask them what's going on in your world. Yeah. I'm going to ask them what's happening in your market. How are things different? So that when I'm coming to you saying we need to do this, I have a better understanding of why that might not work in Russia. <laughs> and so once you take that time, and believe me, it's hard. The time zones were, you know, I wanted to go to bed, but I had to commit, <laughs> right? Today is the day I'm going to stay up late to talk to, you know, somebody in Hong Kong, whatever it is, but you've got to make that commitment uh, because that personal touch is going to make a world of difference. And for me, I think that's what people are going to have to remember in this new environment. You can't just have your little chats on, um, you know, uh, Di, you know, uh, di, um, instant messaging and, and Google Hangouts. And it's all great, but to a certain point, you still have to make that connection and ask people about themselves and get to know who's on your team. Oh, I love that. It, I agree completely. I love that perspective because you know firsthand whether, you know, how important that is and what yeah. the benefits are. Yeah. Okay. I want to, um, Heather, I'm going to ask you this next question, but I want to ask it of everybody. So, Here's the thing. One of the things that we hear about, you know, generations have been doing a lot for women, 
right? And the polarization of what happened with the early feminists was really necessary to get things started, to break out of what had um, really become a solid societal role for women. And you all play very different roles in, in your communities and many of them are similar as well. And so as we know of polarization, it goes this way and then it goes back. And what we're really looking for is this place here where the pendulum can just settle. And as we're getting closer and closer to the center, what's needed is um, more finer adjustments, right? To continually do that. So I'd like a little bit of reflection from you about how you've seen that, where your focus is now, maybe a little bit about how your journey has been. Heather, you even talked about be labeling yourself as bossy instead yeah. of understanding you were a leader. Like what, how has your definition as yourself as a woman, as a leader changed? And what do you think is next? What's the next tweak that's gonna make the biggest difference in this new world we're in? You get to start, Heather. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's such an important question. And uh, probably as I hear other people talk, uh, other women talk this morning, I will, I, I, it will become clear, but. I promise right, you get to wrap it up. Everyone will go and then. Yeah. <laughs> so start them off. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess my reflection on the leadership piece is, and I, I love the way you, 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 you pre-framed it with this, with this pendulum, because there's a part of me that bristles just a little bit when there has to be this raw, raw thing about women in leadership, okay? Okay, I've never actually said that out loud. So it's, um, <laughs> it's just been a thing in here that I'm trying to work through because it's not, it's not uh, refined at all. But there's something in me that bristles when, when someone or groups of women actually sometimes feel that women have to have, you know, be had a girl, you know, you're yits. Um, so I'm still working with that. I don't know, I don't know what I want instead, <laughs> but um, I, I'm still thinking about that. So this is a really good question. Okay. We, yeah. yeah, I think one of the things, and, and Casey and I have been chatting it about it ourselves last week and even a little bit over the weekend, because International Women's Day is the time to really be putting focus on that again. And it is the polarization that's been necessary to pull us out of complacency and out of where we were. And what's happening is we have the opportunity to make finer and finer adjustments. It's about what's next. And it doesn't make anything that happened behind us wrong, just necessary mm -hmm. and more coarse, right? And we're looking to get more, we're, we wanna use finer and finer grains of sandpaper in order to form what it is that we're all creating together. So thank you, Heather, because that's a really good opportunity to get us in that place. So why don't I refine the question a little bit so it's not so big and philosophical. It's a really big question. <laughs> LaDonna, what, what is the next fine tuning you would like to see for yourself and other women that you lead? Fine tuning and other <laughs> That's. Are you sure you refined that question and made Probably it? Probably not. <laughs> I'm too fascinated by the question. I'm like, I don't know the answer either. Maybe you guys can tell me. Um, so, okay, let's let's make it a little bit more concrete. LaDonna, when you hear women around you speak about themselves, what's one thing you would like to change about how they see themselves that you think will bring them closer to where we are all standing on one platform together, regardless of gender? Um, how do they see themselves? I mean, I think that for me, so I'll just use myself as an example again is, and what I try to teach my 16 year old daughter, really, we had a conversation about this this morning, actually, is, is have a, a, a better definition and understanding of power, what it means to be powerful, right? Yeah. So that, um, you know, I've heard other leaders, other people have said, and I've, I've, I've taken this, I've, I've stolen this thought, it's not mine originally, but the idea that when you're feeling powerful, you see the world as open with opportunities. And when you see yourself as powerless, everything is a threat. And so even, pow again, people, this, people have just abused the term power, you know, and, and what we see is, as powerful is really very ugly most of the time, right? So I, I think what I would encourage others, other women to see is see themselves as powerful, self-efficacy, right? Um, um, 
you have your own guiding principles, you have your own strengths and your value and worth, and you have to seize that power so that you're not um, taking threats from every, seeing things as threatening from every side, right? I'm, I'm, I'm waxing on and on because I haven't been able to sort of refine the thought, but that's the idea is that, that I would like people, more women to walk into their power and realize that they can see around them, see the opportunities around them instead of all of the threats I and all of the things that aren't working. I love it. And I want you both to know one of the things that Casey and I have learned is it's this discovery of things ourselves live is what allow other people to think for themselves and pull out their own ideas so they can interact with us and we create conversation. Mm -hmm. If I only ask you for what you have as refined ideas, people will take and reject and they don't even think about it. We actually have less of an impact. So thank you for feeling your way through it. It's one of the reasons that I didn't want to ask for the short sound bites. <laughs> this, is how, this is how women do discover together. This is a real conversation. This is how women coming together help lift each other up because we're willing to say the unformed thought. We're willing to put it out there for each other and know that someone else is going to pick it up mm. and take it a little bit further. So Sanal, pick up where LaDonna left off and mm -hmm. you take it. What, what are you thinking? Just add to this piece. I think the one thing I would like to add is as leaders, we need to bridge the gap when we are guiding or teaching someone. The, we can always bridge that gap between you being a, being a teacher or a leader and uh, someone else being a customer or a student. So when, when I feel that gap is reduced, they, it is more like we are working as friends and then we all get more out of whatever we have to offer. And that is my, my own experience. Like when we are interacting as friends, because I, now, now I see the same customers coming back to my classes, then we always start a conversation, not just teaching, but how is everything going and everything. And then that, that makes the class or the workshop so much more, it adds so much more value to that when we bridge that gap between you being on a pedestal and the uh, your customer being on the opposite end of the room. I think we need to bridge the gap as women. And I think as women, we are <laughs> we, have, we have, have that uh, na na natural inclination to do that, just be friends with everyone and just chat. So I think we, we have it in a good way. So my uh, one uh, suggestion would be just to bridge the gap between the customer and the, the teacher or the student and the teacher. Oh, I love that, Sonal. Some of the language we've been putting on that is moving mm -hmm. from hierarchy to heterarchy. Okay. <laughs> which is, thank you. You know, which is how the uh, feminine thinking is in its power. Yes, yes. It was a new concept for me. I, I understood the, the concept of it, but I didn't have mm -hmm. the, the term for it. Mm -hmm. And it came up a few months ago, I guess almost a year ago. And I was like, oh, this is what we've been creating. And now I've got a name for it. And I love that the heterarchy is this where, you know, well, it's this <laughs> instead of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Beautiful. and the, the leader in the moment is the person who has the next thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, yeah. and it could be anybody any moment. It can change and it's fluid. That's right, that's right. Leadership is not a title, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's right. And that's what we embrace here is that it's, there are managers and people have positions that require leadership, but it doesn't mean you have to be in one of those in order to be a leader. Exactly. Right. In fact, the more leadership you have, the more effective you are in that position or in any position. So Leanne, so this feeds beautifully into everything that you do. Why don't you talk a little bit about how important this community and hierarchy is in your world? Yes. So a lot of the teachings that I, I was ready to answer yes. another question and you took me somewhere else. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, so for me and a lot of the teachings that I've been um, experiencing up here, it, it, it is quite matriarchal. So I'm really learning and, and feeling a lot more of how powerful women actually are. And the piece that I am working to bring more of out in myself and with my clients is a lot more of the self-compassion piece. And we have that understanding for ourselves and that understanding for what's going on with us and the people in our world. It allows us to be more compassionate and more um, 
true to ourselves with each other and therefore that ripples out into the community as being a way to express ourselves more truly and have more compassion and understanding for each other allowing us to bridge those gaps that we were talking about so absolutely and I'm going to ask this question to everybody as well because I just realized time is like flying um I would love to have you for another like two days uh, <laughs> Leanne, on that note, because I think it's a beautiful place for us to tie back around to Casey, what is the biggest piece of advice about bringing more self-compassion to ourselves? I'm working on more awareness right now with self-talk and understanding more about you know, the pieces of advice that I give my clients and that I give my friends, a lot of those things I don't often say to myself. So I'm realizing how important it is to talk to Leanne in that same manner. And I've known it on a mind level for years and it's just now integrating into myself. So it's just the awareness and just having the um, capacity to understand how we talk to ourselves. Oh, Does that make sense? Yeah. KK calls says, uh, you, you know, you know it, and then you know it, know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Different pillars, different yeah. learning levels. <laughs> exactly. Sanal, your biggest advice that you want all women in the world to know about having more compassion for themselves. Uh, yes, self compassion. As Leanne said, it's so beautifully. And as you know, Karen, I'm working on a course for the throat chakra, which is about communication. And the first thing that I think is more importantly, not more important, but the first thing is how you talk to yourself and then how you talk with others, with your friends, family. So I think self-compassion is a very important piece of any kind of communication or any kind of interaction with people. So I think, uh, and there are so many ways we can have that in our lives. Like we don't have to be an expert or a perfect in everything. Just hone a piece, a tiny piece of what you have to offer of value and then you can give more of that to people it, like so many times we want to get it all we want to have so many things like to fit in our what we are going to offer to our uh, family or friends or customers you can say but i think that, that that is where we kind of fall apart and we don't know what what we are offering so and and this i learned from you karen when, when we are doing like just hone on on one small piece which you feel comfortable with and just be very just put everything in that one small piece to offer. And that starts with self-compassion. Like you don't have to be a perfect or expert in everything in the world. So that, that is my advice. Beautiful wisdom. LaDonna. So repeat the question for me. Um, I was listening to Sanal and, and taking it all in, but just repeat the question for me so I can. Absolutely. What piece of wisdom would you like to share? from your experience to other women that have more self-compassion around themselves or to trust themselves? What piece of advice yeah. would you like them to, would you like to give? I mean, I think that from, again, I always start from my, my perspective. Um, you know, sometimes we are so keen to make everybody think that we have it all together mm. and, and that we think we are more attractive to people when we look like we have it all together. Mm. But what I've learned is the opposite is actually true. <laughs> So when, um, when you actually are able to, you know, let people know that, you know, I'm hurting or there's pain or there's, mm -hmm. everything's a mess. It's the, when you're vulnerable, um, you actually get more people to you because people are like, oh my goodness, you, Ladana, or you, Karen, have gone, I thought you had it all together. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. You know, so I think, so I think really um, so that's for me, that self-compassion is being able to admit to others around you and you're going to grow your circle of influence that way. And you're going to, to grow, um, again, deeper friendships, deeper relationships with people and so on. So that's, that for me is really show your vulnerability. Oh, great advice. Heather. Ah, oh, that's, these are, these are just such empowering things to start my day with the, these ideas that, you know, ramble around in there, but, but now we're actually able to, to speak specifically about them. Um, I think the thing that both Karens here have, have given to me 
uh, both during my training with them and um, every single time I talk to them is this idea of um, uh, just, just going and doing it. Just go and do it. And when you get into overwhelm or when you get into not sure where to go next or you get into this self-doubt where you're really not having a good time anymore, reach out to the community, get put back together again, reframed, and then just go on again. And here's what's happening. You know, listening to Leanne, it was interesting because, I, I mean, I can really relate to the things that we say to ourselves that are negative and, and I'm becoming more and more aware of those all the time because, because it's often a task I give, I give uh, clients. But what I'm, what I'm noticing is that Karen and Karen's voice is in the back of my head too, saying, of course this is happening. You just need to, you know, you just need to reach out to somebody or you just need to go back to your binder and have a look again. Or of course you can't do that right now. You, so your, your voices are, are in my head there. And that's really new for me in the last, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the last couple, in the last couple of years. So my thing would be this, this concept of, and you used to say it, Karen Kessler, you used to say it all the time. Just, you just need to get out there and do it. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but you really do. There's no way you can hone these skills unless you get out and do it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right, Casey, back to you. Uh, this has been so fantastic. There's been some great discussion in the Facebook uh, um, live. And so definitely pop in and go and, and see, uh, see some of the conversation there. I think each and every one of you, uh, one of the reasons we love to gather like this is, as Karen was saying, it's it's not about having a scripted set of questions or a particular, you know, prepping answers, because this is where we create more understanding. This is where we actually create the ripples of success. This is our very first uh recording of our Ripples of Success uh, interview series. Uh, so yay, officially yay. launched. <laughs> and uh, our whole idea is what can we drop in that can go and ripple out? And there's been so much today that is that I'm going to continue to contemplate on and that our community will continue to to share and, and talk about. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being here, for taking your time, for being up on a Monday morning <laughs> and, uh, and, and joining us here today. So thank you. It's been a really fun, a fun way to start the, the morning and uh, Happy International Women's Day. It's a, a great time for us to just connect in, remember how wonderful and powerful we are as women and the things that we can do to ripple that out to impact other women in our world. It's great being with all of you. Thank yes. You. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank Have a great Thank day, you. everybody. Thank you. Bye.